What is the South Atlantic anomaly? Where is it and why is it dangerous? The South Atlantic anomaly, that I'm reading from Wikipedia, SSA for short, South Atlantic anomaly, is an area where the Earth's inner Van Allen radiation belt comes closest to the Earth's surface. We know the Van Allen radiation belt is a zone of energetic charged particles, most of which originate from the solar wind that are captured by and held around the planet by that planet's magnetic field. Earth has two such belts and sometimes others may be temporarily created. It comes close, they come closest to the Earth's surface, dipping down to an altitude of 120 miles, 200 kilometers. So this leads to an increased flux of energetic particles in this region and exposes orbiting satellites to higher than usual levels of radiation. The effect is caused by the non-concentricity of the Earth and its magnetic dipole, the dipole being the uh, electromagnetic two kinds of dipole, electric dipole leads to the separation of the positive and negative charges. Uh, the SSA, the South Atlantic Anomaly, is the near-Earth region where the Earth's magnetic field is weakest relative to the idealized Earth-centered dipole field. So this area of the Earth, South Atlantic, is the weakest part of the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field, also known as the geomagnetic field, is a magnetic field that extends from the Earth's interior out into space where it interacts with the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emanating from the sun. The magnetic field is generated by electric currents. The area of the South Atlantic anomaly is confined to the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field less than 32,000 nanotesla at sea level, which corresponds to the dipolar magnetic field at ionospheric altitudes, but the field itself varies in intensity as a gradient. The Van Allen radiation belts are symmetrical around the Earth's magnetic axis, which is tilted with respect to the Earth's rotation axis by an angle of about 11 degrees. The intersection between the magnetic and rotation axis of the Earth is located not at the Earth's center, but some 280 to 310 miles away. And because of this asymmetry, the inner Van Allen belt is closest to the Earth's surface over the South Atlantic anomaly, the South Atlantic Ocean, where it dips down to 120 miles in, attitude, in latitude and farthest from the Earth's surface over the North Pacific Ocean. If Earth's magnetism is represented by a bar magnet, of size, small size but strong intensity, magnetic dipole. The SSA variation can be illustrated by placing the magnet not in the plane of the, uh, the equator but some small distance north, shifted more or less in the direction of Singapore. And as a result, over northern South America and South Atlantic, near Singapore's antipodal point, the magnetic field is relatively weak, resulting in a lower repulsion to trap particles of the radiation belts there. And as a result, these particles reach deeper into upper atmosphere than they otherwise would. The shape of the South Atlantic anomaly changes over time. Since its initial discovery in 1958, the southern limits of the South Atlantic anomaly have remained roughly constant while a long-term expansion has been measured to the northwest, the north, northeast and the east. Also, the shape and particle density of the South Atlantic anomaly varies on a diurnal urinal basis with greatest particle density corresponding roughly to local noon. A day, diurnal, a day is approximately the period of time which the Earth completes one rotation around its axis. A solar day is the length of time which elapses between the Sun reaching its highest point in the sky two consecutive times. Now the highest intensely portion 
intensity portion of the SAA drifts to the west at a speed of about 0.3 degrees per year, and is noticeable in the references listed. The drift of rate of the SSA is very close to the rotational difference between the Earth's core and its surface, estimated to be between 0 0.3 degrees and 0 0.5 degrees every year. Current literature suggests that the slow weakening of the geomagnetic field is one of several causes for the changes in the borders of the SSA since its discovery. As the geomagnetic field weaken, continues to weaken, the inner Van Allen belt gets closer to the Earth with the commensurate enlargement of the SSA at given altitudes. The effects. The South Atlantic anomaly is of great significance to astronomical satellites and other spacecraft that orbit the Earth at several hundred kilometers altitude. These orbits take satellites through an anomaly periodically exposing them to several minutes of strong radiation caused by the trapped protons in the inner Van Allen belts. The International Space Station orbiting with an inclination of 51.6 degrees requires extra shielding to deal with this problem. The Hubble Space Telescope does not take observations while passing through the SSA, SAA. Astronauts are also affected by this region, which is said to be the cause of peculiar shooting stars, phosphenes seen in the visual field of astronauts, an effect termed the cosmic ray visual phenomena. Passing through the South Atlantic anomaly is thought to be the reason for the failures of the Globe, Global Star Network satellites in 2007. The PAML experiment, while passing through the SAA, detected anti-proton levels that were orders of magnitude higher than expected, suggesting the Van Allen belt confines antiparticles produced by the interaction of Earth's upper atmosphere with cosmic rays. The cosmic rays are the high-energy protons and atomic nuclei which move through space at nearly the speed of light. They originate from the Sun, from outside of the solar system, or even from distant galaxies. And on, upon impact with Earth's atmosphere, cosmic rays can produce showers of uh, these uh, high-energy rays. Now, NASA has reported that modern laptops have crashed when space shuttle flights pass through the anomaly. In October 2012, the SpaceX CRS-1 Dragon spacecraft attached to the International Space Station experienced a transient problem as it passed through the anomaly. The SSA is believed to have started a series of events leading to the destruction of the Hitomi, Japan's most powerful X-ray observatory. The anomaly transiently disabled a direction-finding mechanism causing the satellite to, really, to rely slowly on gyroscopes that were not working properly, after which it spun itself apart. So, the fact that the South Atlantic anomaly region where the Earth's inner Van Allen radiation belt makes its closest approach to the planet's surface near the south there, the result is that for a given altitude, the radiation intensity is higher over this region than elsewhere around, for example, Brazil, Venezuela, uh, towards Antarctica, that whole area. The anomaly in the radiation belt results from the fact that the planet's magnetic field is not perfectly aligned with its geographic center and poles, meaning magnetic fields is strong, slightly stronger in the north and moves around the geographic poles, leaving the area around Brazil and the South Atlantic closer to the radiation belts. Fortunately, the effects of it over humans on the surface of the planet are not significant. Unfortunate, though, it's very relevant to orbiting satellites. The Hubble Space Telescope does not take observations while passing through the South Atlantic anomaly, as we said. Satellite failures are more common in this stronger radiation zone. It also affects satellites with humans inside, like the International Space Station. Light flashes thought to be produced by radiation directly stimulating the retina of uh, stimulating the retina of astronauts are reportedly more common when they're flying through this zone. As the anomaly is due to the Earth's magnetic field, and since it's always moving, 
including several complete reversals, it probably dances around the planet for the past billion years. It's curious indeed that such a spe special area would even exist. And uh, right now it seems to be over Brazil. A new Danish observatory on a remote island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean will provide researchers with new knowledge about the mysterious irregularity of the Earth's magnetic field known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. The observatory is a part in partnership between DMI, the Danish Meteorological Institute, and DTU Space, the Danish National Space Institute. The new geomagnetic observatory located in the island of Tristan da Cunha was inaugurated recently in 2008. The island roughly 300 inhabitants and a few of the researchers on the project. It's an island, a remotest inhabited island in the world, also located right in the middle of the South Atlantic Anomaly, which is the area where the Earth's magnetic field is weakest. This makes it incredibly interesting for the Danish researchers who are working to understand the Earth's magnetic field and the way which it affects satellites, for example. Now, at that present, the strength of the Earth's magnetic field is decreasing by 5% every 100 years. And researchers don't know why or what the consequences of this will be. This is, of course, not good. Decreasing magnetic field 5% every 100 years. So in 500 years, it's 50% less. The South Atlantic uh, anomaly. Strength of the magnetic field is decreasing 10 times as fast as the Measuring station will therefore also give the researchers the opportunity to learn more about the consequences of global weakening of the magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the Earth from radiation from space, and the area around the South Atlantic anomaly is therefore very poorly protected. In the anomaly, the radiation belts that surround the Earth, the Van Allen belts, are very close to the surface of the Earth, and this is, among other things, significant to satellites, as we've said before. The Air France 447 electrical problems and the South Atlantic anomaly. The Bermuda Triangle and missing aircraft may seem like science fiction, but there is a well-documented region off the coast of Brazil that contains highly charged particles. The area is known as the South Atlantic anomaly it's, uh, and is avoided by at all costs by orbiting satellites. NASA satellites that do travel in the region are shut down or go into safe mode to avoid damage while passing over the Atlantic between Brazil and Africa. The electrical field around Earth protects us from cosmic rays, and there are two bands that trap the highly charged particles circled in the Earth. The protons trapped near the surface in this region is called the Van Allen Belt, and this radiation can cause all sorts of malfunctions in spacecraft electronics. Also, the Geiger counter used to measure cosmic rays on Explorer 1 in 1958 stopped functioning because it was overloaded by radiation. So, what is the connection to Air France Flight 447? This is where the highly technical science could put some to sleep. After the flight path is used by commercial pilots without incidents daily, there is the possibility that one of these Tropical thunderstorms trapped in, into the electric field nearby. The intertropical convergence zone is known for some of the most violent thunderstorms on the planet. With cloud tops over 50,000 feet and violent updrafts at 100 miles an hour, there was a tremendous amount of electricity generated. My friend, a commercial pilot, tells me that lightning can be constant in these storms. So I pose a question to the flight expert and astrophysicist. Could flight 447 have been affected by a rare sequence of events, including a direct lightning strike, extreme proton charge from the South Atlantic anomaly, and then left defenseless as a storm and G-forces in the violent up and downwards tore the fuselage apart? That could be. Lightning who was blamed for the missing Air France Flight 447. Article by Rich Batros from 2005 in uh, Red Ice Creations asked a question about whether airlines have been notified. 
And uh, he cites the following incidents as a result of the Van Allen belts. United Airlines reported high frequency communication losses and solar radiation storms, causing planes to be diverted to less dangerous routes. Rerouting and general delays are costly to the airlines. One example of that was a storm that caused a flight to be diverted from a polar, polar route, requiring additional fuel at Tokyo and extending the flight by 5 hours and 30 minutes. South Atlantic Anomaly and South Georgia Magnetic Observatory re-established Magnetic Observatory on South Georgia. So, the magnetic reversal in progress is it in progress. It's known to be, this SAA is known to be growing in extent and spreading westward from South Africa as the Earth's internal magnetic field rapidly weakens in the region. This may be early evidence of a forthcoming reversal in the direction of the Earth's internal magnetic field. We don't know in detail precisely what occurs in these reversals, including the changes observed in the magnetic field and the time a reversal takes to complete. But these factors are important in knowing where the radiation risk may be increase, increasing and how atmosphere might respond. Earth's magnetic field has had many highs, lows, and reversals in the past, and the last one was around 800,000 years ago, so the Earth is known to be able to regenerate its field and has done so during human prehistory. Understanding the development of SAA may therefore be significant understanding the reversal process and its impact on life and the natural environment. And this is from Biblioteca uh, Pleiades. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.